This is the 2013 Tesla Model S 60. And today I wanted to take a look at it because I think this is actually a good buy over a brand new Model 3. The Model 3 has been super successful. It's probably the best selling electric car of all time. Uh, but you can get a used Tesla Model S similar to this one right here for about the same or even significantly less money. So today we're going to take a look at some of the cool things about this Model S. We're going to drive it and we're going to talk about whether you should buy a used Model S or a brand new Model 3. My name is Brett Kennedy and you're watching The Chooches. So I borrowed this Tesla Model S from my stepdad, Mike. Now Mike has been on some of the vlogs before. Um, you've seen him in our McDonald's video and on our cheap car challenge video. Uh, so this is his car and I'm going to be taking a look at it today. Now, as with all of our car reviews, I like to just talk about if there's anything that's been changed to this particular model. And the only thing that's been done is he did get the windows tinted on this. So outside of that, this car is completely stock. Quick history about Tesla and specifically the Tesla Model S. So the first car that Tesla came out with in 2008 was the Roadster. And they shared a lot of parts with actually the Lotus Elise for the Roadster. It wasn't direct crossover, but it was based on an Elise chassis and it was very similar to the Elise. But the S was their own new car. They built that in-house and that came out for the 2012 model year. Now, Tesla still makes the Model S, um, but they've since come out with other models. Uh, the Model X, which is their full SUV, came out for the 16 model year. And then more recently, they've come out with the Model 3 and the Model Y, which are the more entry-level models. So we're going to start by talking about some of the cool exterior features of the Model S. So to start, we have this key that's like a good, uh, it, I mean, it looks just like the outside of the car. But one cool thing is we walk over this way. When you do approach, it will actually open the doors for you if you have the key in your pocket. Sometimes it takes a second, but the key, the handles will pop out automatically. These were known to be a little bit of an issue with the S's. Sometimes they can overextend and they'll cause issues. They'll actually open the door uh, automatically. But it's kind of a cool thing. On the Model 3, you got to push it in and open it kind of like a normal handle. It's a nice luxury feature for the Model S. So another cool thing is the glass sunroof. So unlike a Model 3, you do get a glass roof. But this is actually a power opening sunroof. Now, it should be noted, these are known, they can bind up, and they are unfortunately very expensive to replace. Uh, the owner of this car told me he doesn't actually use the features because he's worried about it breaking. Um, but that is one thing that is kind of cool, and even if you don't want to use the actual sunroof, you do get a full glass roof just like you would in the Model 3. And it's pretty cool because you can't really see into it very well from the outside. So another cool thing if you decide to buy a used Model S is that they have not changed this design too very much. So the front grille here is a little different. Uh, on the new cars, it's basically just body color all the way through here. Uh, that is one of the signifiers of these early Model S's, that they have a black insert here in the grill. Uh, but if you look at this compared to like a brand new Model S that's hundred something thousand dollars, it looks very similar. And that's actually one thing that Tesla's gotten kind of harped on for the Model S, um, is that they haven't updated it yet. This came out for the 2012 model year. Uh, this one is a 2013. And it looks, I mean, you know the difference, but at the same time, if you don't really know much about Tesla's, you might think that this one is brand new. So another cool thing that you get on the Model S is that you get an adaptive air suspension. And one of the really cool things is you can actually adjust it with the screen inside. So this is on the highest setting that you can set it. This is 6.9 inches of ground clearance. And as you can see, it actually raises it a lot. I mean, that's, that's a pretty substantial raise. Now, one of the things that you can also do with this is you have a GPS setting where let's say you're going over the same spot in your driveway and you know you're gonna scrape when it's lowered. Uh, you can actually set it so the GPS will know when you get close, it'll raise the car automatically, and then you won't even have to fumble around with the screen. So very cool feature on the Model S, and that's not something that you would get on a Model 3. We're going to talk about the powertrain of the Tesla. Now, unfortunately, all the batteries and stuff are stored underneath the car. So we're just going to pretend that there's an engine in here, and I'm going to open this up uh, and pretend that I know what I'm talking about. As you can see, a very nice roomy frunk. But we're going to talk about the powertrain. So this is the entry level model for the Model S. This is a 60. And the 60 has a 60 kilowatt an hour battery, obviously why it's named the 60. Now, when this was new, it got about 205 miles of range. The zero to 60 in about six and a half seconds. And that's still good for most cars today. Now, granted, Tesla's come out with far more, you know, better batteries, better motors, all that sort of stuff. Um, they make cars that are a lot faster and have a lot larger range now. But I think all things considered, that's still pretty decent for when this came out. Uh, additionally, you do get some loss of range as the car gets older. So this car, you know, it's in the hundreds, obviously still upper hundreds, um, but it's not going to go some crazy distance on a charge um, like some of the newer cars will. However, it's still decent and it's still something worth noting. Now, a new Model 3, that is an advantage if you do decide to get one of those. They do have a better range and it is going to obviously be brand new. Um, so you're going to get that full range at the start. Whereas if you buy a used one of these, you are going to already see some of that range loss. Also, only Tesla owners would have an Elon's Musk air freshener. That is, that is ridiculous. 
Another nice thing as we climb into the cabin here is you just notice how much more luxury oriented this car is. Um, everything's wrapped nicely in leather. It's got a nice style to it. And unlike the Model 3, like I said, there's just a little more thought and effort put into the design. For example, this screen, which is absolutely massive, and we're going to talk about this in a second, how good this looks for 2013, is integrated into the dash nicely. You have the screen in front of you here. Obviously, some nice materials on the dashboard and stuff. I mean, it's nothing crazy. Um, obviously, this being a 62, this is more of the entry level for the S. Um, but this is actually really nice, and I just feel like overall this cabin is a lot more high-end than the newer Model 3. Let's talk about this screen because, for one, this screen, the, the resolution is absolutely incredible for 2013. Uh, so this is the navigation screen. It says powered by Google Maps. Actually, it says on the corner there. I think they use some other system for it from what I've heard as well. They don't really let you know. Um, but it's incredibly responsive. I mean, as you can see, there's no delay with me moving it around. And, you know, it's, it's awesome that it's powered by Google Maps. Hardly any other car has this. Um, you know, obviously a lot of the new stuff has CarPlay. But it's kind of unique that Tesla went with this because this stays relevant to this day and you don't have to worry about updating it. Additionally, there's just so many cool things that you can do in this screen. I mean, you can control pretty much everything. You can open the doors, the tr or not the doors, but the, uh, the frunk, the trunk. You can open the charging menu, you can open the sunroof. Uh, you have your suspension controls here. Uh, as you can see from earlier in the video, we raised it. Um, you can adjust the suspension if the car is on and you can lower it and whatnot. But there's all sorts of just crazy features that they have on here. Um, that is pretty cool. Additionally, you can see your camera here. Uh, you can use Spotify that's integrated into it. And they have some cool features on the arcade and on the toy box. So this is the toy box, as they call it. So this is some of the crazy things that you can have on here. So they have a, a fart mode where you can set a whoopee cushion and the car makes a fart, which is just, we're not even going to get that. They have a romance road where it will turn this whole screen into a fireplace. Um, they have a sketch pad where you can draw all sorts of stuff, write some nice messages, such as this one on the screen. Um, but they just, it's, it's kind of funny, all the things that they have here um, that you can just kind of adjust and play with. And it's, it's pretty insane that they put the time to put all these things in here when they don't actually really do anything. They're just kind of fun to mess around with. So one of the other great benefits of the Model S, um, there's two big ones. One, any early Model S got free lifetime supercharging. So essentially that means you can go to any of the Tesla superchargers and you don't have to pay for it. Now, the catch to that is that if a Tesla dealership takes one of these older cars and on trade, they actually disable that. So you do have to verify that is something that the car still has. Um, that's not something that they put on the new cars anymore. And that was a big selling point for this back in 2013. Additionally, they have connected services. It's something that you have to pay for in the newer cars, um, but they were offered for free on this. So one of the things you can do with that is you can connect to the internet and, you know, for example, if you want to look up your favorite YouTube channel, you could just look that up on the screen and you don't have to pay extra for that, which is pretty awesome. Cool thing about the Model S is that you get a full gauge cluster, which you do not get in the Model 3. Uh, another cool thing with this, you can see the owner named the car. That's one of the features that Tesla has on here. Uh, he named it My Boy Blue, which and it's actually kind of cool because it matches the car on the outside uh, in the center of the screen here. Then you also have on the right side here all of your data on terms of kilowatt hours how much power you've used, your miles, all sorts of stuff like that. A very cool feature. Obviously, that's a little more technical, um, but it's very cool that you can see all that. And then this is all configurable as well. Another cool feature of this car is this voice control button right here. And you can give it all sorts of commands, even some weird ones like this. Open the butthole. And your charge port flies open <laughs> right back here. That is insane. So in addition to having the front trunk, you also get a rear cargo area. Uh, this one has a nice little cover that you can fold up here uh, if you don't want people to be able to look in and see. Um, but one funny thing that you could actually get with the Model S is they actually have an option where you can get two rear facing seats here. Uh, I've heard that they're absolutely useless. It's very hard to fit anybody that's smaller than a young child in the back there. Um, but you can actually get this in a seven seat configuration, which is pretty insane. And uh, that is definitely not something you can do in a Model 3. All right, so driving the Model S. So, uh... It's obviously getting an electric car. You know, I drive mostly gas powered stuff. So it is a little bit odd getting into something electric for me just because it's so quiet and the power is different and everything. Um, but it, it, you know, it drives like almost any other electric car. I mean, there's a lot out there these days. Um, and in terms of like how the pedal feels and the auto braking or the regenerative braking, it's all pretty similar. Now, if you look on the screen here, we have uh, the car in sport steering mode and we just have the standard regenerative braking on. Um, some of the newer Model S's, they have more driving modes and stuff. But this one, um, you know, it's pretty much the same all around. Obviously, you can change the steering and stuff a little bit, but there's nothing too crazy on that. 
Uh, but it always is weird to me when I get in a car like this, hearing the lack of sound. I mean, you just expect to hear something and it's just so unbelievably quiet. Um, and it's really, it's really something in terms of sound. Uh, over a Model 3, what I do like about this is I like having the central display. I don't understand why they don't do that with the Model 3. I think that they should at least have a heads-up display of some sort. Um, and I just think it's really a missed opportunity that they don't have anything like that. Uh, a couple things that I'm not a huge fan of, and I'm being a little picky here, but the cruise control stalk is right next to the wiper stalk here. And I think that is the most annoying thing because you go to turn a lot and you accidentally hit the cruise control thing. And uh, that just was not a great placement of that. Other than that, it actually handles nice for a car as heavy as it is. Um, it's nothing you know crazy sporty, but it's got a nice feel to it. Um, the steering is pretty light. Like I said, nothing too crazy. We'll step on it a little bit when we get onto the road. Um, it's just should talk about the acceleration a little bit. Um, but it drives nice, and honestly, it's it's more like uh, I would say more of a luxury car than it is something that's super sporty. I mean, obviously, you know, we see that what they make nowadays. This isn't going to come close to being as fast as any of the new Model S's or even a lot of the other electric cars that have come out um, where the power numbers are just insane. This is definitely more reserved. And if you're looking for something fast, I mean, you can get a used Model S performance. Um, but, you know, obviously, it's it, once again, the new stuff is going to be a little bit faster. And you are going to play substantially more for the performance. Uh, speaking of values now, so you can get one of these early Model S's for like, you know, maybe high, low 20s, high teens for if you got a ton of miles on them. Um, this one's got a little over 100,000 miles. This car you could probably get for about 20 grand. And that's a pretty good deal. A new entry-level Model 3 starts at 38. Now you can get a used Model 3 for far cheaper, um, but that is something to consider with these, uh, you know, that there is a price difference. I mean, you are gonna save some money if you buy the S, um, but you also have a little bit more things to worry about with the handles, the sunroof, and obviously as the battery gets older, there is some fear with that once it's out of warranty. That is definitely not a cheap thing to replace. So as we turn onto the road here, we're going to give it a little bit of acceleration and we'll see how it feels. I mean, that, that pulls pretty good. It, it, it's nothing insane, but man, that instant torque is, is pretty, pretty awesome. Um, this is also only a rear-wheel drive model, I should note. It's not an all-wheel drive, so it doesn't have that grab like the all-wheel drive ones. But, I mean, you just have that instant torque, and it is it is awesome. I don't care what they say. Even as, as a car guy, if you're not that into electric, being able just to go like that and have a little acceleration is pretty awesome. So, in conclusion, I think there's a reason to buy a Model S. I think there's a reason not to. If you're looking for something that's just purely practical and you just need it to get to point A to point B, and you don't really care all that much about what it is, what it looks like, anything like that, the Model 3 is fine. And like I said, there are benefits of the Model 3, um, but I think if you want something that's a little more unique, has a little more character, and has some more unique features, I definitely think the Model S is the one to buy. Obviously, you know, do your research, make sure, you know, you look into everything. If you are going to buy an older one, there are some things you do have to watch out for. Um, but overall, I do think that it's definitely something you should consider over a new Model 3. So thank you guys for watching. Please leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you liked the video and want to see some more car reviews. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. You're flying away. What, how do you do this? How do I shoot? <laughs> Dude, I, I don't get this game. Oh, dang, look at that. I got a rocket. Oh, dang, where'd I go? Oh, man, I'm gone. <laughs> So we're shooting this on Thanksgiving, and you know what Thanksgiving means. I can't hear anything. <laughs> I'm supposed to play Christmas music. Run, run, Rudolph. Santa's gotta make it to town. They'll actually extend out the door handles. Tesla and the Model S specifically. So. Gosh dang!